Hey, Heather. Hey, Michael. Is this... Are we doing another episode of Smoke and Madness right now? I think we are. <laughs> okay. Why is there a trash bag on the wall? Why? Why? Yes, but how many of us exploitation filmmakers had to rewrite an entire script? It happens all the time. Even Hell of the Living Dead had to be is rewritten. This, is this real life? You know who can help us out with this. What is happening? Fucking This is Gene. a bit. Yeah, assholes. I'm still here. Nice to see you want my help so badly that you forget I'm sitting right across from you. <laughs> There's only so much I can do. You could buy this city if you wanted to, Gene. You could put the shake down on some snooty film snobs. Put the shake down? What am I gonna do? Tape over their copies of Days of Heaven with the Jerry Lewis marathon? I don't think these guys use tapes anymore. Oh so my god, this out. dialogue is I wasn't dense. <laughs> oh god. Hey everybody, it's me, Michael. Uh, yeah, I'm editing. Oh God, I'm editing another episode of Smoke and Madness. It was a really impromptu uh, stream with me and Soft Lavender and Heather, and we watched the Cinema Snob movie. So Soft Lavender's doing an episode on uh, the another Cinema Snob movie, but Lavender wanted to see the first Cinema Snob movie, so. We watched it on stream. I post the uh, live, us watching it uh, very soon without any editing. Um, if you wanted to see highlights, that's what this is. Um, Heather and I also talk about Dark Crystal, the series on Netflix, the Steven Universe movie, so spoilers for those. And uh, yeah. Really? Because I thought that we were devastated to our cores by the Steven Universe movie to the point where we can't function as human beings anymore. No, I'm over it. This is reactions of things. We're reacting to stuff. Yeah. But that hurricane right there, that's a declaration of war against the people. What, what do the shootings, the hurricanes, and all these things that are, that are being generated, what does it have to do? It has to do with what, really a couple of things, but one thing in, in, in particular, the same thing Hitler did to London and England during the Blitz. Blitzkrieg, it, that's right. It, they're literally trying to uh, kill the will of man. That's not, that's not. What, the, what, uh, what, what do you think the Blitzkrieg was, what, brother? The, blitz, the Blitzkrieg people did. The mark of a good episode of Smoke and Madness is always in its amazing introductions. Don't you know, have you not found that to be true, Heather? I sure have, Michael. Cool intro. Actually, do the intro. Play, put the intro next. Me in a couple of seconds. Tear that page out of your book. That's not evidence for evolution. You don't know a thing about what you, about my monetary situations. Oh no, you made brownies. We are so glad that you had the opportunity to pick up our new project. And Heather bought spooky voodoo. We also saw Scary movies to tell in the dark. Scary movies to tell in the dark? Scary movies to tell your sister's butt. Tell it to your sister's butt for all I care. <laughs> <laughs> what is spookier than your sister's butt? <laughs> okay. All this and more on today's episode of Smoke and Madness. Probably gonna play some hunt and record that and put that with this episode too. Hey, shop We got him both. Yep. Oh no, another one, another one, another one, another one. Behind, behind, in this door, in this door. He might be rising. In this doorway. Here, open the door and I'll shoot. His teammates. Oh, 
I tried. <laughs> Indeed it does, sir. You haven't seen an ass pounding that hard since Dahmer. Well, what makes an exploitation girl go for such a pretentious dork? I don't know, Craig. I'm kind of going for you. Are you a pretentious dork? Hey, I'm a geek. A geek that argues Fulci and Argento, not lean and Altman. <laughs> I hate this movie! Fulci. New York Ripper, Zombie, The Beyond. You need to make that the intro. That's... It's fine. I'm not gonna kink shame. That's what he wants me to do. That's what he wants me to do. God damn it, I'm not going to. I'm gonna make fun of his bad movie without kink shaming him. Well, if I didn't, Derek. Might why are we talking to these? Why are these characters? What the fuck? Where? Why? What? Like I don't know where. I agree, Mac. And our boy Craig maintains the wife's innocence. Your point being, I'm not. The killer might not have set foot in this the accent. house. This accent. So what do we do? This delivery. You gotta start thinking like Black Angus, Neil. I can't. Neil? Oh, he said Neil. Okay. Have you forgotten already? Okay. 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 Neil, brother. I thought okay. he said it. I thought he said an, I, I yeah, uh -huh. we, all we all did. We all thought he, he said, said another word. Yep, he didn't. He we said Neil, him. everyone. He said Neil. It's okay. There's someone here I think you should talk to. Help me, Craig! I thought she was in jail. What the fuck? Is Don't it Jim Sterling? There's a safe <laughs> at the Phillips residence under the bed. It contains twenty-six thousand dollars. <laughs> I got the mayor crawling up my ass because two of my men are waterboarding poor innocent women. Spoony has the mayor up his ass. What movie is this? What movie am I missing? <laughs> what? Is that Angus? Uh, more or less. Would you tell that black son of a bitch he even stares at the wrong set of tits? I'll gank his fucking sag card so quick he won't be wearing fucking clown shoes at a child's birthday party. Is this the movie in the movie, or is this the movie we're still watching? Have a sag card. Oh, and it's not weird to have a sag card in real movie yeah. making. Someone fucking morons. Uh, Fuck me. What is that? They also it's a nose. friendly warning. Went a bad parents kid. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, but it's past my senses. I gotta go. Aww. You're terrible, kid. You know how many permits you have to get to shoot a minor at night in a real movie set? More than they did for Neil, this bullshit that we I'm just watched. I'm gonna need your help. I want to point out, we were just, like, yesterday watching Dark Crystal. This is a real downgrade in movie watching quality. That was a really good shot! Uh, no, I'll make sure to give him an archery medal when I see him. Whoa, whoa. Nice pun. What? What am I watching? Like you said. Oh, I, I can smell the sex gives scene coming. something to do. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh-oh. Get, get over like here. Sex. There you go. You have a nasty <laughs> habit of thinking I'm going to stuff. Oh, no. What else have you been accused of? Oh, I'm, I'm blocking Brad's face. Sorry. <laughs> Oh my god, he's wiping, he's brushing her hair out of his her face! What is this movie? God, this is the hackiest shit! He can't even write a- Oh my god, it's so uncomfortable. Okay, wait, uh, I don't- Ah, uh, why? Ah, uh, ah, uh, this is so uncomfortable! Ah, oh, god! I'm not that committed to this! I didn't want this fanfic, I didn't want this fanfic! Wait, 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 ah, wait, ah, I don't know how far to skip! Ah, could I can skip into something really bad! I don't want to skip ahead into a bad future! It's like teleporting! You don't know if you'll teleport into the middle of a brick building? Why does it keep moving? Stop moving around like that! I can't keep moving! Oh god! Alright, there's no way. Alright, so we gotta do the whole thing, kids. There's no, there's no, we'll tell you. Alright, they're being horribly awkward. Ew! 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 Brad Jones! Ew! <laughs> Ew! Oh my god. Oh, you're right, right. It takes like forever for this to happen. Okay, boobs! No! Boobs! Curses! What is this? This is weird. Your friend's in the room with you when you filmed that. Ah! That was weird. Was, was that scene negotiated? That was and so how much? Weird. <laughs> do you see that much of boobs? Oh, yeah. Oh my God. Yeah, you do. You see a lot of boobs. 
No, no. They got a lot of boobs. Listen, I. Oh. Good if we have to go from a zero to 100% of boobs, it's 100% boobs. Wow. It was awkward and weird. It was so quiet. They didn't even play any music. Yeah, there was no. Do, 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 do. Oh god, there could have been more. Oh, my boss is probably not far off. Last one. Check your map. East of here. You're wrong. I heard from the last guy I was playing with that you don't want to aim for the head on this guy, aim for his chest. Chest, got it. Is this the assassin? He's got no face. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah, okay. I've, I've like, fought this guy once. I haven't fought him yet, because in my last game with the guy that was trying to mentor me, we both got jumped by somebody with a stick of dynamite. I, I love this game. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna do it. Um, so. He's here! Yeah, yeah, just distract him for a second while I find a place to put this trap. Oh, this is intense. My guy might got it. My guy might got it. Good effort, my dude. Like, the thinnest jizz I ever saw. In case you were wondering, carbonated water and high fructose fork drink, those frog fish are high the top two ingredients of this beverage. High fructose corn syrup. Clink. Clink. It's pretty good. I like that. I have this feeling like it would be cool if every year since the document came out that there was some kind of live stream um that kind of <laughs> added jam. something new to it yeah. so that way yeah people are constantly you know you get this thing because to me i personally just me on my side i'm not speaking for everyone who was in the document or anything like that just me personally mm. it really infuriates me sometimes that everyone has talked about this um, even people who aren't directly involved, even people who weren't even there when most of the things happened, like Tamara and Malcolm or whatever, except for Doug. Yeah. Like, anytime he has ever talked about it, it is so minor. Mm -hmm. And it really aggravates me that he has not been, like, Brad has talked more about this than Doug has. Yep, it's so true. I don't know. Scary Stories, Tell in the Dark, the movie. Guillermo del Toro produced it he and he was it. and he was around for the makeup i think right or he he yeah. did some of it but and like those other things it turned out fine yeah um i think it's not my demo i think it's demoed to kids mm. i think specifically high schoolers and junior high kids yeah um, especially because the ending has this ambiguity where there might be hope and, and also sequel baiting. The bully's dead. Like, he yeah. got turned into a damn scarecrow. That I don't was, know how you come back was, from... That was actually a really terrifying scene. Um, should we go ahead and get into spoilers? Oh, we've been doing spoilers. Oh, okay. I don't give a shit about these assholes. Um, two of the kills were almost identical, so that was dumb. Oh, yeah, the, uh, the where's my toe... And no. oh, Harold and the dream woman. How are they similar? You're, he's in a corn maze and he looks down the rows of corns. No, no scarecrow, no scarecrow. Then there's a scarecrow. Now, granted, 
It turned into the hallways keep filling, like he keeps going down a hallway and then she shows up and then that turns into it, but it's still the same outcome. Yeah. It's just that Harold's getting closer in one way and she was getting closer in another and that mm. was the whole point and that was it. Maybe an unpopular opinion, but I thought the movie lasted a little too long. Like maybe. I don't know what you could've... cut though. Uh... I think it's also weird that she was arrested and the guy was arrested. You know, the uh, the guy who gets drafted. Yeah. And they they were at the police station where there is a dead police officer with a broken neck. Mm -hmm. And I don't know how they don't really explain any of that. So maybe the sequel will yada yada a reason why they didn't get arrested again. Uh, we also saw, here's a bonus one. We also saw Once Upon a Time Hollywood. Also spoilers, super spoilers. Yeah, spoilers forever. Um, it's not a horror thing, and I'm putting it at the end here for me to have options to talk about it. But it also, it was good. I it was really enjoyed good. it. it. It's up there. After thinking about it for a while, like, there are many Quentin Tarantino films I would not watch before it. I would it would be in my top five at least. Yeah. Which is I just oh I didn't show you this video. I made a whole video I uh, made a video titled I Hate Lindsay Ellis and Therefore All the Bread Tube. Uh, oh, I didn't show it to you. I, that's the reaction I didn't need. Fuck you. <laughs> I woke up at three in the morning and I had I had a sap rising urge and I made it. You woke up at three in the morning? Yeah. I thought you came to bed at three in the morning. No, I woke up at three in the morning and I worked until five in the morning and then I went back to bed at five in the morning. Uh, Jackie Brown's a contentious one, but it's one of my favorite ones because like, it's so boring. <laughs> I like Jackie Brown. Like I like the uh, I like the underlying history in Jackie Brown that gets told. I love the character dynamics between the main characters in Jackie Brown, like the the bail bondsman dude and mm, yeah, and I'm blanking on her name, but I know she, Pam Greer, right? Yes, I yeah. think I'm 100 right, and I'm not even gonna look it up. That's how fucking confident I am. Wait, was it Wanda Sykes? No. What an asshole. I'm being no. an asshole. And it definitely sparked the concept, I think. I think that's where we're starting to build the idea of the uh, Quinn Tarantino alternate history universe kind of thing. I like I like the alternate history universe thing. And but... this, this fits in really well because instead of the Tate murder happening with the Manson family, the Manson family done gets got. Like at least like, three of the four of them. Those Manson kids went to the wrong house. <laughs> That's like, uh, like we get to find out exactly if how was, Tarantino feels about yeah. the Sharon Tate murders. If this was the 90s, that's the tagline they would have done. Yes. For my favorite. <laughs> mm. I do run a good stream, kids. Mm. But anyway, so um, so Dark Crystal is, uh, the show is really high fantasy. Like, it's got some brevity, but it is mostly just taking everything seriously and like really leaning into the the importance of, of, of stuff and, um, and fucking they killed it, dude. Like, A, the Dark Crystal is dark. Fucking a, uh, uh, a Skeksis done physically beat someone to death. Yeah. That was harsh. This is not for kids in any, uh, in any no, stretch. It was crazy. This is young adult material. Yeah, it was It was like, it, like it needs, uh, it, my first problem, of course, with it is I want more. Yeah. And it's an expensive show, and I'm really worried about a season two of a show like this. I'm pretty sure they're, they've already got most of a season two. I don't know. I would be more. I don't know worried. how Netflix works. I would be more worried about a dip in quality. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Honestly, there's too many set pieces uh, to like. Um, I, I kept on being like, where where is this gonna end with the elaborate scene? Because like, okay, you have just the first. You have like Skeksis Castle, that a looks very much like it does in the movie, which is very impressive, and b is expanded upon in the movie. So there's all these other areas. You have the um, uh, Iron Forest, or Stone Forest? Yeah, Stone Forest. Um, the Stone Forest area, which is kind of the same couple of areas on a loop. There's like just the general wilds, mm -hmm. the deserts, yes. the heretics play, the heretic and the wanderers joint. 
that whole place is like an entire set. Like, like a, it's like a Burning Man Muppet show in there. It's it's pretty wild. I am starting to work on Bunny Perspective again. And I'm actually doubling down on that with some other projects because that Steven Universe movie is fucking good. Spoilers for the Steven Universe movie. It's really good. It's so good. Like, I hate things that, I hate Pixar for making me cry a lot. Cause they don't earn it. Yeah. Steven Universe earns it. consistently earns it. Yeah. <clears throat> like there are things in Steven Universe that Steven Universe didn't intend for me to, to clang onto, but I did. Um, um, but yeah, um, but Steven Universe is uh, the show where there are episodes of it where I get done with the episode and I just go, how the fuck is this a show? Like, I can't believe it's like, it's so good. And or it's... the ending is so dark. Mm -hmm. Like there's a song where it's Steven who's fucking 12 is, uh, 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 sings, uh, fuck. I can't remember the end of the song, but it's like I'm watching myself die, whatever. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's uh Steven in the Stevens mm -hmm. episode where he clone, like he clones himself with time travel. Mm -hmm. There's this really <laughs> good dynamic to the show. Where it's like, um, like I, I'm shocked by how much I like it. Especially the first few episodes are like, do whatever. The cookie cat thing can kind of keeps you around, but boy, Steven's annoying. Mm -hmm. And you get this idea that he's going to be annoying forever, but no, it's it's written really well, no, he, and it's about characters growing. Like the yeah. entire show is about characters growing. Yeah, he he grows in a really good way every time. And like they had a lot of time to develop this too. Because it does the 10 minute episodes and then they would do like the the bombs. I don't know, this is a really weird way of releasing TV, Steven Universe. It's yeah. always been like a really weird way. And um, it's very exclusive feeling. Like it feels like if you don't catch it at the right time, you're never gonna see it. But well, the other thing is like the internet hits spoilers hard and fast. Like I knew a I knew what White Diamond looked like before I saw White Diamond, and that reveal is striking. Like, yeah. Because it does the 10 minute episodes, and then they would do like the the bombs. I don't know, this is a really weird way of releasing TV, Steven Universe. It's yeah. always been like a really weird way. And um, it's very exclusive feeling. Like it feels like if you don't catch it at the right time, you're never gonna see it. But well, the other thing is like the internet hits spoilers hard and fast. Like I knew it, I knew what White Diamond looked like before I saw White Diamond, and that reveal is striking. Like yeah. White Diamond's um, character design is like, I mean, in a in a show with amazing silhouettes, it has like the diamonds have just really good really like you know what that character is about silhouettes mm -hmm. everyone was so happy yeah. that steven had a neck <laughs> but um so um but then they so they revealed this character and i kind of i actually kind of knew where it was going pretty quick and that's what started to make me like go Oop. and then when i when the reveal is yeah rose literally told a sentient being that clearly doesn't know any better to stand in one place and never move. That's fucked. That were, but that killed me because it that is a more like that's a literal thing that happened to that character. That's a metaphor for anyone that bails on any other friend or whatever you want to say or whatever the fuck. And the feeling of that is why I responded to Spinel. Because I mean literally yesterday I'm barfing out channel awesome bullshit again and a lot of that's really tender to me you know mm -hmm. um because like it's really like love goes to hate real easy they're mm -hmm. both really strong tender emotions oh yeah like this is like a like a lost love type story. no it's not that it's worse than that it's scarier or it's it's actually more real than that mm. it's a you desperately want someone to be your friend that is never going to see you as a friend. Oh. So Rose, so so Pink Diamond, 
right? Yeah. Maybe not really Rose, because you could argue that pregnant Rose also changes immensely. Like mm -hmm. being pregnant changes Rose. Right. Well, being on Earth changes Rose a lot. That's like, true. And and like and that all of the stuff that she did was before the Earth right, time and right. like during her Earth time. Well, and the other thing too about Pink Diamond is, I mean. <clears throat> It, her being revealed as Rose was a huge bomb in the show. Yeah. And more than that, um, we had heard how horrible Pig Diamond was this whole time. And it's actually starting to become true. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> because, like, she's basically, like, this spoiled brat with almost godlike powers. Right. And she only wants Earth because she's just a brat. Mm -hmm. I knew right away where it was going. So then I just started the, yeah. the initial crying. Because I, because what I could see right there is Steven already is just like, okay, you're fucking annoying me. Like it was, there's this moments where Spinella is clingy and Steven can't deal with it. And there is a real, real serious, like awkward relationship where someone is really into somebody else. And that first, the person can't, explain to them look i mean i i, I don't right I, like they don't have those memories to go back to yeah to say hey this is the reason well, not why. even the memories but it's like they don't feel that same way yeah because it was a total reset well more than that like the character is clingy right yeah. like and and because of the, the way the character like is like her base level if you will before the abuse is to be a bouncing around happy t fun distraction and you know and to amuse pink who needs that kind of thing right right and um so like when you see her go back to <clears throat> to to that state and not like a crazy psycho um what you're seeing you know what you what you see from then on is you see just like how they're getting pearl's memories back just like they're getting Amethyst memories back, etc. She's getting her memories back of being rejected, but they're not the specific memory of stay here. I'll be back, which is what triggers her. Mm -hmm. And then, or more and more of that triggers her. And then, you know what I mean? So anyway, right, then they go back to the garden and they realize what the fuck. And it's like a destroyed planet and shit. And it's mm -hmm. just like, you, you know, and yeah, when, and Spinell's is like, it's like an existential horror. Because it's like that awkward exchange, except because you didn't want to be inconvenienced by this other person's affection, you put them in a position where they trust you and you abandon them. Mm. So there's a lot of me like identifying with that. Okay, so where it gets inspiring or like good is I go, is Spinell has multiple falls back into that feeling. Right. And she manifests that feeling in hate and destruction. Mm -hmm. So that's how I feel about Lindsay and all that. Yeah. All right. Search is in session. Yes, sir. I um, have you seen my show? Oh my fucking god! <laughs>